Welcome back to Site Tech Intermountain Earthworks training videos. In this video, I want to explain the difference between design and depth and slope. So in the setup, job setup, if we go back in here under the project, you can see that there's a mode. There's modes for depth and slope, design, and infill. When you're running design, you are only loading and running designs that have been created either from the office or infill designs. You're running on a surface that's been generated. That is using GPS corrections. When you run depth and slope, it is allowing you in the field to basically create your own flat planes, sloping planes two ways, a cross slope and a main fall slope. But depth and slope still uses GPS corrections. So it doesn't matter if you're on your job site with a calibration, as long as you're getting corrections from a base station, you can still do this, but it is GPS base station correction related where two dimensional is simply just using the sensors on the machine and benching relative to the floor of the machine. So if you go to depth and slope, you can still pick a measured data, but if you are on a project that you already have a calibration and a design, you can go down here where it says extra line work and actually have it show the line work so you can still use it as a reference or you can do none selected. I'll show it both ways. If I do none selected and hit apply, when I come out to the main screen, it's gonna ask for a bench heading. The reason for a bench heading is if I am going to actually dig in a straight line with the machine mainfall and cut a cross slope to the right or left, for example, I do have to be facing the correct way. If I was facing this way and then did a bench heading, and then came back this over here and then did a cross slope 2% to my right, it's actually gonna put it the wrong way. So if I'm facing this way, you can see right now that's a blank screen, it asks for a bench heading. I'm gonna bench right here with this blue button, which gives me a heading. In a flat plane setting, that doesn't matter. But I've got a bench heading, so now it prompts me for a bench elevation, which is this blue button at the bottom right here. So that zeroes out off of my right tip, a flat plane. Zeroed out right there, boom. I can start cutting, vertical offset, you name it. The other thing I can do at this point is at the top ribbon here, as you can see, there's a main fall, which is looking at the bucket side to side, and there's a cross slope looking at the bucket from the view that we have. So if I benched right here where I'm at, anywhere I go around me, I can check grade on that right tip, or both sides of the tip, excuse me, and reference wherever the elevation was from where I first started. So if I come over here, maybe this little lower spot right here, that's telling me that I've got a true cut of 150 on one side and 130 on the other and reference back to that original one. On a split screen view, it would look just like this. Still have that reference of the elevation. What I can do now is put a cross slope to this if I needed to. So I had benched there, but I need to cut 2% to my right. I touch and hold. If you just touch these, it toggles through anything you had in there. But if you touch and hold, you can go in there and put a percentage. If this right here isn't in percentage, it's in units that you don't want, like um, ratio, you can go into the units and change that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a bigger number just so it shows better on the screen. I'm going to put a 9%, but this plus or minus is how you change it up or down which way you need it to go. So if I want it to truly drop down to my right side, it would be a minus. We'll hit plus. We'll hit apply. Now on my cross slope, you can see that it pitched that design to the right side of me. On the main fall, if I needed to come down, maybe at the same percentage down towards me, I could come in here and you can see this one is on ratio. I'm not much of a ratio guy when it comes to shallower slopes, so I'm going to back out of that. I'm going to go into the gear with the tablet, and I'm going to come down here to the units. In units, I'm going to change both of these to match, so I'm going to have percentage on both of those. Now what I can do is go back in there and enter the desired number. We'll put in a 6%. Same thing, plus or minus changes which way it goes. But since this is a 3D environment, 
Now, as I rotate side to side, we'll put this one on main fall so you can see what that looks like, profile. So you can see that it's di diving down underneath me. In a 3D world, if I go this way, it still is referencing the exact same information. Now my main fall kind of shows up on this screen and my cutting underneath me shows that way. In two dimensional, that would have followed with me. So this is what depth and slope does for you. It allows you to now start cutting and digging and digging and digging and it will progressively get deeper and deeper underneath me and it will get deeper and deeper to my right side as you can see right here. Depth and slope allows you to just on the fly create whatever you need to create to build something outside of a designed environment. You can still be on the design and doing all this because there's always those opportunities to think outside the box. The job trailer needs to go in the corner. Someone just needs to have you build something to get water to drain. Whatever it may be, there's always opportunities to use this. Even if you were like backfilling around a house, you could bench head around the, the house on one side and then give it a percentage. And as you come around the opposite side, you can just re-bench as you spin around the other side. So as you can see here, we've got the percentage still cut and hard to my right side, need to cut a little more and come underneath me. At any point, you can change this back to level the other thing you can do is at any given time, you can change that bench heading by simply touching this one. So if I actually needed to change that bench head to where I'm facing this way, in the bottom right, even though they're not blue and highlighted, I can still touch it, which gives me a new bench heading. Bench head, heading benched, excuse me. And then bench elevation, I can re-bench my elevation again no matter where I'm at. Same thing if I was on even a 45 degree angle where I'm at, new elevation, I wanna do a new bench heading. Change that, bench elevation, change that. And if I wanted to go back to those same settings that I had, I could touch them again. And it reapplies that information, but it reapplies it as a heading this way. So that's the basics of depth and slope. It's still using northing, easting, and elevation for the project that I'm on. If you're just on a project that doesn't have a calibration, you can just still get corrections from a base. Those northings, eastings, and elevations may be different, but those are job site uh, oriented. So thank you for watching this video from Site Taking Her Mountain on depth and slope.